everyone. I'm so excited. I literally just finished filming uh, my online shop <clears throat> and website launch video with a vlog and this is like the last half an hour time that I have to be able to do things in terms of filming because uh, this weekend is the Easter weekend. We have Sunday, Easter tomorrow or Easter Sunday and then Monday is a bank holiday when my boys are home. It is a half term so I'm a bit out of breath and I also have a cold. And then Monday my parents also arrive late in the evening so literally this is it. Whatever I can manage to film this is what you will be watching throughout April. So I am going to create some illustration, botanical illustration with my new botanical stamp set. It's brand brand new so first time I'm going to use uh, this particular set. So let's say we want to create foliage, right? So I'm going to show you what you need to do for that. Let's find my drawing pen right here. So for example, I'm just going to start by a line and I'm going to show you a number of different um, ways of illustrating foliage. So there's also um, this acrylic block that's available on my uh, website alionacreates.com. This is now the new place where I'm selling my products. Please check it out. You can also browse my website and see if you find anything interesting there other than my products. So I'm going to start with the top leaf like so and then there's a couple of options. Um, let's see, I've got, so the idea of this stamp set is to build your own. My stamp sets usually are uh, those that I design for like illustrative purposes. They tend to have that kind of like a fun aspect about them where you can create different things with them. So it would never look the same, basically. You can just use them to help yourself, especially if you're someone who doesn't find drawing very kind of easy to do. This is a good way of um, giving yourself that creative um, aspect without needing too much skill. So I'm just making my life easy by putting all of these leaves individually. Now the other thing is you can also rotate them so to make them look a bit more different. It is springtime here, so I'm very happy to be playing with these kind of illustrations. Now, this is nice and simple. You just go ahead and create these illustrations. Sometimes you can also layer them, but I'll show you that in a different tutorial because layering uh, takes a bit more planning to do and I don't have it. I don't have the time today. I'm just happy to be able to plan, uh, sorry, plan, illustrate without too much else going on. Okay. So then we have these elongated elements. Let's use some of them. I think this one was this one here. So I always give you an option of like a similar illustration but different, slightly different shape or size and what that will allow to do is just make it look slightly different. So for instance, 
it's not going to look like exactly identical, the same leaf, if that makes sense. And then I'll go with this one as well, like that. Like that. So very easy as you can see, there's not much to it. Just think about how you'd like the leaves to point and that is it. Really easy. Oh, I might do this one. Let's do like a eucalyptus type of a illustration. So I'll take these rounder leaves right here. So that goes here. So with the eucalyptus, we'll need to draw a little line to connect the leaves. What you can do is you can remove a bit of the uh, line if you wanted to layer things over because they do look nice. When I'll show you a tutorial how to do it, I think you will find it quite pretty. So maybe one more pointing downwards. I think that's enough. Okay, so let me show you now what I will do next. Before we start, sorry, I have a cold brain today, so I can't quite remember. Have I shown you the clusters that you can build? So today I'm just showing you how to um, build greenery, like leaves and foliage to put into your bouquets. You can also use just some of the green leaves to add a bit here and there as an element of uh, of leafage but you can build this beautiful floral clusters as well as adding some of the berries and things like that so let's now start by just outlining the illustration that you've done so this is the part where you are going to experience drawing and you might as well find that you're learning or improving your drawing skills as you do this because quite often a good way to learn is by going over the lines of an artist that you do like their work and you would find that in that process you're learning and improving your own skills so Think of it that way, that this is just a little helper. When I am stressed, I find drawing not easy. I, I won't like how my hand is moving. Uh, my drawing skills become a lot, a lot worse, I find. So in that way, Using a stamp set I find always helps me. All I need to do is just outline. Also, if you're someone who is just starting and you want it to be as easy as possible, you can just stamp with black. But for me, I like things to look more like hand-drawn rather than just stamped and done. So I find that when you're just stamping things, it kind of doesn't look as great as when you are using a nude ink and then doing your own overlining. Because during that process, like you see, you don't have time to actually change it. You don't have to follow the line exactly you can change things and as you do that they don't look identical but they're there to help you place the structure and, and build the structure it's 
So I'm just going to go ahead and finish lining them all out. Okay, so that's quite nice. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the eucalyptus leaf. So here I'm going to connect the lines like so. <clears throat> you could also use different round leaves. We have four which are varied in size and slightly in the shape as well. So if you wanted to change up and go like for the biggest one at the top and then go smaller as you go towards the bottom of the um, structure, then you could do that. So here we go and I would definitely pull a line through the eucalyptus. I'm just going to wiggle it slightly so it's not too straight. All right, okay, so that's the drawing part session in a nutshell. And now let's get some watercolors out. In terms of watercolor, I'm going to use my own little set, the ultimate palette here, which has five colors. Let's start with mixing like an interesting type of a gray. Now to mix a gray, I would go into cobalt teal with the strawberry velvet and that would give us a nice gray just to adjust it until you get to the right type of color both of them are granulating and to get the granulation happening what you need to do is use plenty of water so I'm going to go into water now and just move things about also leaving some highlights here and there it's just my thing I like it I find that it uh, looks a little bit overworked sometimes when you completely cover the entire area this is more illustrative and fun. Okay, so I just had to change the um, battery. And that gave us some beautiful time. Or well, it gave us rather time for some beautiful pigment separating effects. That's what I like when I create my watercolors is the fun playfulness with the granulation and pigment separation and how the pigments kind of just play around on the paper. You don't need to do much, you just let the watercolors do their fun part. So both the stamp set and the watercolor palette, the ultimate palette, they're available on my website, alonacreates.com. Stop by and check it out. It's new. I have just designed it. I've just set it up. So I'm very excited for you to see it. It's been a lot of hard labor, <laughs> sweat and tears uh, that went into it literally <laughs> so you can see you can lean your color towards blue or red so if it's too blue just add a bit of the red like so you can see this has more red in there it becomes more fun to play with it when you give some diversity to the mixes and then just 
dab some water or some just the tip of the brush usually helps just to wiggle it like so to release that pigment load and get it to move around and separate so that was nice and easy as you can see beautiful um, colors let me just show you a close-up and then let's do something a little bit more juicier for the middle one so I'm going to use a tray here I'm going to go into green gold deep and that's a beautiful color on its own it doesn't require much in fact I'm just gonna go with that I have designed this green gold deep the way I like it so I don't need to mix it up every single time and I just have it ready in a tube that was the idea behind this entire stamp set that all these colors are my favorite mixes so to add some more interest I would just use a bit more water and just kind of move things to the top of the leaf like so if there's a bubble of water just pick it up like that okay let's carry on It's so therapeutic to have this mindless type of illustrating happening in your sketchbook where you're just basically coloring in uh, without needing to make decisions about thinking have I done a good drawing job? Am I happy with my drawing skills today? Did my hand do what I wanted it to do? None of that matters because you're just following the, the lines of the stamp set that you have created and they will never let you down. They are exactly the same every time. So you get the idea. I'm just going to carry on and then I will move on to the next one. Okay, so now I am thinking of creating like a more juicy green for this one. Oh, this is nice. This is like a sap green, but like a juicy sap green. So this is a nice, nice green. To mute it down, I'll add a little bit more of the quinacridone gold deep. That's it. And now we are kind of in a really beautiful color. Just a bit more. That's it. Okay. So the same thing here. I'm just going to start with the top. And this time I'm going to add more water on the bottom and just let it kind of bleed into there. One thing you can do is do a few leaves at the same time just to spare some time. And so what will happen here, because we have cobalt teal, you'll have some fantastic granulation. So it's like, it's a color that's close to sap green, that's it but it has all the amazing granulating aspects. So I'm going to do a few leaves now at a time. So look, just the tips here. Work fast because you don't want the pigments to dry. Okay, so I'm going to do three at a time. Or maybe four. Let's do four. Risk it for a biscuit. Okay, so then washing my brush out, having enough water but not too much, so it just puddles there. And then just connect the two. 
make sure there's loads of movement around so wiggle your brush where the pigments are because that's how they separate like that okay just wiggle wiggle okay and then do the same around here like so three and four okay again water 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 and then going back and wiggle wiggle just like that wiggle wiggle if you find there is not enough color here just go back into your dish and just add a bit more also remember sometimes less is more purely because it might be then not pigment separating if it's sitting in a too strong puddle like so so just move it around okay water in here in here here it looks beautiful if you have never tried watercolor and you're watching this I hope it really inspires you to try watercolor because if this doesn't I don't know what would it um, it's just so much fun seeing these colors granulate and look at that beautiful effect of the kind of like an ombre almost all right let me show you a little close-up so here we have got the first one hopefully you can see all the beautiful granulations happening and the cobble teal coming through and just beautiful Sap green would never give you that. These are also very interesting mixes here. So I hope you have enjoyed this fun foliage illustration and I will see you soon again. Thanks for watching.